Sandy Raw, you can take me down, hurt me bad. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen here, right? You have nothing to fear from me. That's fantastic. You have nothing to fear from me as so long as you behave. And it's pretty good to be good there. Well, listen, uh, let's talk just a little bit about how you got started in the business. So I got started um, because actually I was a SWAT team leader and I implemented the physical fitness standard that. I let things get a little crazy, and I almost failed the standard that I implemented, right? I was going to get kicked off my own team. So I did P90X, and I did it for six months, lost, uh, or yeah, I did two rounds, lost 62 pounds, and found out there was a business side of things, uh, but I was really super skeptical. You know, I mean, police work was what I was going to do my whole life, I, and that's what I wanted to do when I was a kid. But uh, I did a lot of research. I was pretty sure somehow or another I was, I was getting conned, but I did a lot of research and I was like, well, you know what? The worst that could happen is I just cancel it. I'm not going to end up with a garage full of stuff. So I did it. And one of the things that I was excited about was I got to choose, you know, if I was successful or not. That was the thing, that, was the thing that really set things up for me, where I was at, I was at the PD and I was the youngest sergeant. Right? So I had no control over how much money I made. You know, the sergeant who slept behind Radio Shack and showed up at the end of the ship with Bedhead made more than me because he was senior to me. And I was like, you know, I get to choose how much money I make based on how much effort I put into this. So I'm, I'm going to run with it and see where it takes me. And my goal to begin with was just not to lose money. And my goal has changed substantially since I went through. Yeah, so kind of, it'd be fun to break that story down a little bit, but you see there's kind of like the two sides to the story. There's the side that the husband tells, and then there's the true side to the story, right? <laughs> you know, the wife won't tell. At least that's how it works in my household. Is there another side to the story? As you were watching this unfold, what was going through your mind? Well, Chris is very gung-ho. I mean, Chris tells me he's gonna do something, he's gonna do it even though I'm not sure if he's gonna ask for permission, <laughs> and all I said was, okay, just as long as you don't involve me with what you're doing. I don't care if you have to just leave me out. It's a recipe for a perfect marriage, right? <laughs> but, but I was mad, but then I was getting mad at the stuff I told you to go do. Sure, you can go sign me up, and he did, but then he always just looked at the computer waiting for some number to change. What's volume? Is it going to move? And I said, I don't know, but I gotta go do stuff. You gotta come help me or not. And so, it was, it was really hard because he was so passionate about becoming a coach and wanting this business to be to me. And she was like, you know, he was able to make a little bit of money off of it. He was going to. But it was just hard for me to, to be a little patient with what this uh, new hobby was. Right. You know, so now I wish I was more it Since I'm not really on board at all. So, let, so we got to the bottom line, just not on board at all. So there came a point, though, where you started to get a little bit of traction, and obviously there must have been a little bit of a, oh, maybe this thing might work. Was there kind of a time when that took place? You know, Cody tells the story a little bit better than I do, but I'm giving a shot she can correct me, I'm okay. sure. But, um, <laughs> you know, every Thursday morning, I would be like, okay. every Thursday morning, I would be like, hey, baby, we, we made $43, you know, in the beginning. Hey, baby, we made, you know, such and such, and she would be doing some next to and then eventually we got to a certain number where she came up and she sat down next to me and she goes, all right, now what are you doing? And that was, that was kind of the, the time to change. What was the dollar mark for you there? Um, all right, no, maybe a couple hundred. But the first time I was at the kitchen, he said we made $42 something. And I was like, big deal, $42. But then I thought, well, you know, that's gas in the car. That's, you know, grocery. Like that. You know, and then I started to come to work and just, hey, you know, what are you doing here? Maybe I can help help you out. Because it was one of those things where I got to, you can't, you know, just, you can't be able to join them kind of thing. Because why would I be so resistant to letting them do anything? I mean, it's for me, at least, just becoming open-minded to something that he wanted to do. This just about anything first. It wasn't like I did it. It was, it was fun to, to start seeing the success, though. I mean, and you know, one of the things that I was, I would say to everybody out here that everybody's business grows at different levels. I remember being a, a five-star coach and hearing volume numbers and commission numbers, and I was like, holy cow, you know, that's, I'm not anywhere near that. So everybody's business builds at a different level. So I just want you guys, everybody out here, to understand if you just stick with it, if you're in this room now and you stick with it, you know, 
whatever you want to happen will happen because the things that have happened for us now, either one of us would never imagine. You know, one, one of the stories that I talked about where we really started seeing success was, man, I was driving a 99 Ford Ranger and a tree fell on it and knocked off one of the rear view mirrors and the tailgate wouldn't drop, which means I couldn't fix the tail light, which means I couldn't get it inspected and the AC didn't work and it was, I wore like a jacket, you know, it's a little bitty truck and I'm a Texas cop, the parking lot's full of giant nice trucks and I remember one day going to one of the other officers and I was like, I really like your truck, how, how much is that? And he gave me a number, I think 500 bucks a, a month or something and I was like, and so, like, the next day we went and saw Toy Story 3, or 2, one of them, right? And Cody's like, what do you want to do now? And I was like, I think I want to buy a truck. <laughs> and so we did, and we drove to the lot across the street from the movie theater, and we bought a truck. And I was just like, this is my first nice vehicle ever. Did he have a mission? You know what he did? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, I've always been such a warrior. I've always grew up worried. I mean, my friend that is out there, we can trade Oregon stories all day long. Um, and so when he said he wanted to do that, the warrior, the doubter, the unbeliever in me kicked in. Can we really do that? And he is so super sure. Yes, we can. And why would I not believe him? Because, I mean, so far, everything he said was going to happen with each one of come to life. So I'm pretty sure he's going to go get a new truck. <laughs> 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 but just, you know, keep it close, keep it finished, keep it finished. And of course he did. He just got it all the way he wanted. I love that. <laughs> it's not like you don't get nice things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, when, yeah, one of the things, I mean, I'll tell you, one of our most moments as a, as, a, as a couple, and for me at least, was was when, when we got married, and, and before that, I knew that going to Disney was a big deal for her, right? It was on her bucket list, but just really seemed like something we weren't ever going to be able to do. And the first time we went to Disney, this was pre Beach Body, right? So it was all on credit, right? And um, but we went and, and I remember she, we walked out into Main Street, you know, we came on Main Street right as the parade was coming, and you know, she starts crying a little bit, and, and you know, I'm, I'm a sentimental guy too, and I was like, wow, it's pretty cool that we're able to do this together, and we put it all on credit, maybe we'll come back five years later. But now, you know, with Beachbody, uh, you know, we, we spent a decent amount of time with, at, at Disney with our, with our family too. I mean, it's just things that we never thought that we would be able to do, you know? Yeah. I Cody, you had kind of, we talked a little bit backstage about kind of your highlight as a, as a career. Um, did you want to talk to any of those? You know, I can look at those pictures and it just seems so surreal that that's our lives. Um, it's that thing in front of the beautiful hall. Well, it's, it's, it's not that, it's not that, it's not that. I mean, I look at pictures going way back when, I'm wondering if I'm sure I'm wearing a weapon soccer to do that. He's, he is actually on a break where he, Took his hour a little bit further than he was supposed to. He come watch the kids play, and then he went back. Um, so seeing these pictures are kind of cool from from where we thought Beach Body would start and to this moment right now. Um, it's pretty cool. I mean, that house. I mean, there's that truck. I mean, the house wasn't bad. I mean, we had happy memories and we were a happy family. But Beach Body just allowed us to do so much more. Um, that car, that Mercedes. Um, I was a big dreamer when I was a little girl. I always thought that someday I would like to have a Mercedes. And I was 12 years old, I saw my step for my first time. I don't know how I got in on it, but I did. And I was like, this is really cool. And, and gosh, someday, you know, someday I'm going to have one of these. And it just got off the radar. I, you know, my someday had passed, and I was living life. And it was last October, I think, when I hit five star. He told me he was going to go do something. And as usual, Chris is like, off the rate, like, there's the to-do list today, and Chris is going to go do, like, the exact opposite. He goes, he leaves, I'm like, oh, okay, whatever, I guess I'll do the dishes and I'll go over to the house. He went to give me the car, and he goes. <laughs> I still struggle with that, and 
I'll get over it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 